2016 Renault Scenic's 130 signature NAV review. What is it? The MPV has suffered somewhat at the hands of the SUV and crossover, where once the people carrier seemed your best bet for transporting families and kids and all the paraphernalia that goes with them, buyers have been seduced by the rugged image of the 4x4. The Renault Scenic hasn't been able to avoid this shift despite being an originator of the MPV segment. Indeed, these days you're much more likely to see a new cadre instead. With that in mind, Renault has been rather bold with this, its fourth-generation Scenic. Elements of SUV have crept into the design, there's a 40mm increase in ground clearance, more muscle to the bodywork and a shift to big 20-in wheels. Interestingly, that's not just for glissy models either, because even entry-level Expression Plus models are rolling on 20s, as they say. While you might expect that to mean ride comfort only marginally better than that of a shopping trolley being pushed over corrugated iron, the tires have a taller profile than those fitted to the majority of smaller wheeled competitors. They're relatively narrow too, helping keep costs down and CO2 emissions in check. Importantly it's also more spacious inside and comes with a bigger boot and plenty of kit to help keep your nearest and dearest safe. It all looks very impressive on paper. But is it enough to tempt people out of their SUV and back into an MPV? What's it like? First impressions are good. The Scenic and larger Grand Scenic are both attractive things in the metal and much more imposing than their rivals. There may be hints of SUV about the raised right height, but the heavily raked screen still screams people carrier. Getting behind the wheel, the tech-laden interior of our high-spec test car was immediately apparent. Analog dials have been banished and replaced with TFT displays for speed, engine temperature and fuel level. Scrolling through the five drive modes changes the center display and the priority of the information displayed. It looks attractive enough but can't show the variety of information that Volkswagen's active info display does. Dynamic S nav and top signature nav trims receive a color head-up display to project speed navigation information and other data. It looks good at a standstill but jiggles slightly on the move. It also seems an awful long way down the expansive dashboard. The top two trims also get our link to Renault 8, 7 and portrait oriented infotainment system. You certainly get plenty of functionality, including the ability to fold the rear seats down at the touch of a button. Unfortunately, the menus can be confusing to navigate and slow to respond. Switching songs on a Bluetooth device for example, takes a painfully long time. The cabin is undoubtedly practical, however. The generous glove box pops open like a filing cabinet, while between the seats is a cavernous center console that can be slid backwards and forwards depending on your passenger's needs. Quality is also pretty good. There are cheaper materials but they're largely in areas you won't touch that much. There's a pair of USB ports and a 12 volt socket in the cubby under the front armrest, plus the same again on the rear of the unit for those in the back. It's handy, but sliding the unit to where it works best as an armrest also hides the cup holders. For front seat passengers, throw in underfloor storage, rear picnic tables for most models and a class leading boot, and it's certainly family ready. Although three adults will face a squeeze to get on the rear bench, and even two relatively tall grown-ups may struggle for rear leg room. To drive, the dinky one 2-liter turbocharged petrol engine of our test car provides adequate performance to up but needs working hard in order to cope with overtaking. It does at least remain smooth, even at high crank speeds, and is barely audible at a cruise. Despite the sizable wheels on which it sits, the Scenic is certainly no worse than the majority of 17 and or 18 in alloy shod rivals. It's no paragon of comfort though, pockmarked urban roads are certainly felt, although the ride becomes more settled at speed. Of course, the French are much better at road maintenance than we are, so our definitive verdict will have to wait until later in the year when we get a right-hand drive example on UK roads. As far as handling is concerned, the steering feels precise with little correction required to keep the scenic in a straight line. You'll also find it's easy to work out how much lock you need to get round a corner. There's no need to take a couple of bites on every bend. But is it communicative or fun? No, not at all. There's a fair amount of body roll and the non-switchable traction and stability controls will prevent anything from getting too leery. The styling might look exciting. But the driving experience will be familiar to the majority of MPV buyers across Europe, safe but ultimately dull. Should I buy one? If you're after a distinctive yet practical family hold doll, 
then the scenic should definitely be on your short list. It may not be fun to drive, but it's perfectly pleasant and surprisingly comfortable considering it's 20 in wheels. We would be more tempted by one of the diesel engines, though. In something like this, the promise of cheaper running costs and a bit more low-end shove makes more sense. With Easy Park Assist, parking has never been so easy. Whether you're parking in a bay, parallel or diagonal parking, it's now easier than ever. You just accelerate, brake and let the car take care of the rest. With the help of the rear view camera, you can keep an eye on the manoeuvre. And just like that, you're parked. From 4 to 99 miles per hour, the active emergency braking system continuously measures your distance from the vehicle in front of you. If you're too close, the system will warn you and engage the automatic braking with no action required from the driver. Between 31 and 99 miles per hour, the adaptive cruise control option on the steering wheel allows your car to adapt to the speed of the car ahead of you. And this is the safe distance warning. When driving between 19 and 124 miles per hour, it informs you of the time separating you from the vehicle ahead using its radar. Between 4 and 37 miles per hour, the active emergency braking system with pedestrian detection will warn you of any risk of collision with a pedestrian or vehicle. The car will brake without any intervention from the driver. The Easy Life sliding console is a great place to store your things with a capacity of up to 13 litres. Slide it forwards and it creates a cockpit-like environment for the driver. Over here, a practical space with two USB ports and one for a jack cable. Slide it backwards, the Easy Life sliding console reveals a compartment big enough to pack, let's say, a bag. For the back seats, it provides additional storage, two USB ports and a 12-volt plug. And that's really cool. For longer trips, the Easy Life folding table, with its elastic cords, allowed you to hold in place connected devices. And that's the Easy Life drawer, with a surprise hiding inside. And if this wasn't enough, with Renault R-Link 2, you have access to one-touch powered folding seats, which fold within seconds with just a click and create a perfectly flat floor. You can also do that with the buttons located in the boot. And that's brilliant. The traffic sign recognition with speed alert allows the car to identify speed limit signs along the road. They are displayed in real time and in colour on the head-up display. This way, you always know if you're driving at the right speed and the system alerts you in case you're going too fast, while you keep your eyes on the road. Alright, can you guess? One last sign? The Lane Departure Warning and Lane Keeping Assist options can be activated directly with Renault R-Link 2. Between 43 and 124 miles per hour, the Lane Departure Warning detects the driving lanes. If you cross a lane unintentionally, you'll feel a vibration in the steering wheel as a warning and be alerted visually. Between 43 and 99 miles per hour, with Lane Keeping Assist, if your vehicle diverts slowly without voluntary action on your part, your car will be put back on its trajectory. Renault R-Link 2 is a true control centre. Its 8.7-inch screen is the biggest of its category. Just like a tablet or a smartphone, R-Link 2 gives you easy access to an array of functions, such as select and play your favourite music. Yes, but not too loud. Check your emails. Twitter. And of course, make a phone call. R-Link 2 also allows you to navigate in 3D. You can get eco-friendly driving advice, and with the multi-sense option, you can customize driving style and interior ambience. There's still a lot more to discover with Renault R-Link 2. Brilliant. High five.
Merci d'être venu parce que tu étais à la base de cette icône scénique, première génération. Maintenant, on est déjà à la quatrième génération. Quatrième génération. C'était une voiture pour une famille moderne. Et c'était un ovni sur la route. Oui. Les gens regardaient ce véhicule-là. C'était un véhicule original, oui. qui sortait de l'ordinaire, qui n'avait jamais été fait. Donc des grandes surfaces vitrées, euh, euh, le scénique. Il y a aujourd'hui beaucoup de compétitions, notamment de crossover. Oui. Alors c'était pour nous en fait le moment de dire soit on renouvelle complètement l'esprit scénique, hein, soit on arrête et on passe au crossover. Alors c'est vraiment le pari qu'on a pris avec Renault. Et c'est un bon moment peut-être de te montrer maintenant le Cine 4, quatrième génération de cette belle histoire de Renault. Alors, je suis impatiente. Oui, moi aussi. Alors, première impression, quelque chose qui était hérité du premier Scénic, c'était l'habitacle vitré. Oui, c'est ça. Une bulle de verre. Ça, c'était vraiment la dimension futuriste. Et ce qui était très très fort et ce qui avait bien marché dès le premier semi, c'était ce côté, euh, en, en anglais on dirait euh, « friendly », un membre de la famille. Oui. Donc là on retrouve ce côté, euh, je dirais, approchable, tactile, sensuel d'un véhicule qui fait partie de la famille. Je pense que tu as touché sur un truc qu'on a vraiment essayé d'aborder. Tu vois, il y a beaucoup de sensualité, beaucoup de « shape ». Beaucoup de réflexion. Oui. Euh, en fait, elle est très, très, très fluide en, en plus. Et elle est musclée. Oui, parce qu'on a essayé de quand même rendre la voiture plus sexy, plus moderne. Euh, aussi une voiture dans laquelle tu veux être vu. Quand le premier Scénic est sorti, il s'exprimait vraiment comme un concept qui était l'habitacle, mm -hmm. c'est-à-dire de l'intérieur vers l'extérieur. Mais on n'a pas perdu l'intelligence des concepts scéniques de base parce que tu vois presque... 80% de la voiture est dédiée aux passagers. Oui, alors ça c'est ce que je vois directement, c'est oui. les proportions. Proportions extraordinaires. Ce qui joue un grand rôle pour nous, c'est les grands roues. En fait, et bien placé, bien placé par rapport à la caisse. Ouais, ouais. Et ça donne un empattement très long, ça veut dire qu'il y a beaucoup de place pour les passagers à l'intérieur. Ils sont, Ils sont très confortables, très hautes pour le style et la sécurité. Et enfin, un rêve de designer. Oui, en fait, parce qu'il n'y a que de jeunes pouces. Il n'y a pas de 19, il a pas, pas, choix, de 18, pas, pas le choix. choix. Très fait, bien. Euh... Donc, une architecture complètement optimisée par rapport à ses proportions. Ouais. Alors, passons à l'intérieur. Oui, parce que le Scénic, ça se vit de l'intérieur. Ok, alors, allons-y. Qu'est-ce qui a changé Ça, c'est la, la, la fameuse console. C'est le lien entre les parents et les enfants. Mais c'est symbolique, ce lien. Oui, ça a oui. été prévu comme ça au départ. Ouais. L'espace intérieur partagé... Euh, C'était l'idée qu'il n'y avait plus de définition autre que les espaces de chacun, mais partagés dans un espace commun. Ce que je constate aussi, c'est qu'il y a eu un travail vraiment important, mais tout est doux. La, la rondeur qu'on trouve ici, euh, euh, la souplesse, et quand je passe la main, il n'y a, a pas d'aspérité. Ça fait plus qualitatif. La visibilité avec le pied à très fin. Mais ça, ça, ça c'est la, la qualité Renault, pour moi. C'est la qualité qu'il y a dans le travail entre le designer et l'ingénieur, de façon à donner l'optimum pour la satisfaction de la personne qui conduit. Ce scénic euh, est complètement en phase avec la génération dans laquelle il s'inscrit, c'est-à-dire le 21e siècle, la force du digital, euh, l'hédonisme, mais aussi une introspection qui n'était pas le cas dans les années 90. En fin de compte, il a grandi, il est mature, et il s'assume, il s'assume complètement ouais. aujourd'hui. Et moi, je lui souhaite longue vie. J'espère qu'il y en a encore beaucoup d'autres. Oui, je oui, c'est hein. que le début. <rire>